Hey you guys, so for today's video on passion, you might as well just call me Shivang Sontag because we're discussing my notes on passion. So growing up, you know, people have always told me that I'm supposed to find this one passion that exists kind of outside of me and pursue it. That when I find this passion, it'll like light up the fire in my soul, I'll have nothing else I'd want to do in my life, and that I'm basically all set for life, and I found that one thing that will give me all the joy in the world there is. The problem is though, that I've never really found this one kind of passion, this one kind of interest that just like was all consuming and took over my entire life. What was also interesting was that whenever people discuss this passion, they always want this passion to exist in a materially lucrative realm. That somehow the passion that I would find for myself eventually would definitely exist in a place or in an area where I would also be able to earn a lot of money. If I were to tell these people that, hey, you know what I'm really passionate about is watercolor painting and experimental art and film, they probably would be like, um, maybe just hold up a little bit, rein in the horses and find a real passion, something that will give you money, something that you will still enjoy. And that definitely probably is not the passion that we're talking about or that you should be really looking for or even focusing on. I also totally understand that these people obviously come from a very good place, right? All they really wanted for me in life was to find something I enjoyed doing reasonably enough and also something that would keep me stable in terms of my income and being able to have a roof over my head and to be able to feed myself. So while I do understand where a lot of these people are coming from and they had good intentions, I really do wish they would stop using the word passion so much because I do think they're using it a little bit incorrectly as we'll get into in this video. But also, I just wish they would say something along the lines of, okay, all we want for you in life is for you to be happy, have a good job that pays you well, and also that you kind of enjoy doing. Instead of really diving in and using this word, this really heavy word called passion so much. In my opinion, the problem with a concept like passion, similar to the problem with other more abstract concepts like love, self-care, centeredness, mindfulness, camp, queer, all of these things is that the word is deceptively accessible to use. It's used very frequently or rather misused very frequently. And then as people keep using it incorrectly, its entire meaning kind of just gets obfuscated. I think that the only thing worse than using a word in an obviously incorrect fashion is to use it incorrectly, but then not know that you are and the other person doesn't know that you're using it incorrectly either. And that way you double down on this strange, incorrect, meaning of it and you also confuse the other person and set them potentially off on the wrong start. Okay, so with that general rant out of the way, I do want to discuss three main ideas about passion in this video. As with every video I've made in the past and I will make in the future, all of this is just based on my own opinions from self-reflection and from my own experiences and what I've found has worked for me in my life. So I hope you find this useful and helpful as you think about passion as well and about doing things with more passion or rather passionately. Awesome, so the three things are, number one, a clarification of what passion is, and perhaps more importantly, what passion is not. Number two, the problems that exist intrinsically and extrinsically with having a singular passion and blinders on to everything else in the world. And number three, I want to discuss some questions and techniques I ask myself and do, so that I know that what I'm about to venture into is gonna be something I can do passionately, or you know, decide if something really isn't for me in the first place. Awesome, so let's dive right into it. Number one is what passion is, and perhaps more importantly, what passion is not. So what I've come to realize is that passion is not something that exists outside of you that you have to go and find. I mean, you're not Mario, and passion is not Princess Peach hiding in some castle somewhere, and you have to fight every freaking Goomba and Koopa along the way to go and find her, and then when you do find her, this passion, there'll be these fireworks and a crazy celebration because you've now found that one thing that will give you purpose for the rest of your life. Somewhere in my mind, when I used to be anxious about not having a singular passion that I could just devote my entire self to, I realized that I did think of passion in this exact kind of way. I sometimes think about situations where people have said things to me like they're passionate about trading, marketing, finance, or insurance. It's really hard and honestly almost comical to me that people were born into this world with their true calling being participating in the volatility of their national and domestic financial markets, speculating over foreign currency, or selling people on ideas or things that they never knew that they really needed. That's just kind of weird, a little bit suspicious. I mean, most naively, if these people were born into a world where the markets and commerce weren't as advanced as they are today, would they just be living their life without passion? No, probably not. They just find something else they're passionate about, right? Which brings me to the idea that passion isn't this one specific thing that's constant, that's static, that you have to go and find. It morphs, it changes, and again, it might not be a thing at all that you have to go and find. It might just be a way of doing things. Okay, 
So when people do say things like, oh, I'm passionate about trading, marketing, finance, whatever, I think one of the following things is going on. These are at least my hypotheses. Maybe they're just lying innocently, they're being lazy with their language, it's easy to just say that. Or maybe they're thinking that if they keep saying this often enough, that I'm passionate about X, I'm passionate about Y, over and over again, they can dupe themselves into thinking that they actually do enjoy what they're doing. Or they found something that they actually think they're good at, and they enjoy being good at something for a large part of their day. Or maybe they just find whatever they're doing is lucrative, that gives them a good social standing in society, and they just like the kind of lifestyle and opportunities that affords, and so they've just decided, hey, I'm passionate about this thing, but really what I'm passionate about or what I enjoy is everything else that this thing enables. The question then, I think, as I probably hinted at earlier, is not what's your passion, but what are some things you can do passionately? In other words, I don't think it's a noun, it's a thing that you have to go and find out there, but it's an adverb, a way of doing things. So here are some things I do passionately. I cook and I bake over the weekends passionately. I hang out, play squash with, and party with my friends passionately. I passionately read nonfiction, hike, go camping, solo traveling, explore different cultures and cuisines, write. I also just love making videos on YouTube passionately. In other words, I spend my time doing a lot of things I enjoy passionately. And so it's not this one thing that I have to go and look for that's going to ignite some latent fire in my soul. I'm already doing many things with passion. And this brings me to my second point. So if passion did exist in a way that you have to go and find it, then what the problem is with having a singular passion and having blinders on to the rest of the world. So broadly, I think there are two problems with this. One is intrinsic and the other is extrinsic in how you present yourself to the society that you live in. Because again, we do live in a society. Intrinsically, this basically means living your life with tunnel vision and really just having one solution to every kind of problem you ever encounter in your life. So David Epstein, in his book Range, discusses the problem of being a super specialist, like hyper specialized in a particular area, and kind of advocates for this idea of being a generalist. When I was reading some of the problems he mentions, or the drawbacks of being hyper specialized in one thing, I could very easily see how that could also apply to just having a very single passion which you're completely encompassed by and focused on and not thinking about anything else in the world around you. Epstein actually discussed in his book that highly credentialed people, as they get more and more specialized in that one area that they're focusing on, it actually makes them more narrow-minded and their experience actually ends up working against them because they actually make incorrect decisions more often and worse, they make it confidently. Making more wrong decisions on average and also being very confident about them on average that's a pretty dangerous combination. I mean, I think this work that he discussed isn't a very novel concept. It's captured pretty neatly in the saying that says, when all you have is a hammer, everything around you looks like a nail. You basically begin thinking that this passion of yours, the thing you've invested so much of your time into, that has also somehow become the source of a lot of your information and your thoughts, has become the solution or, or is the best solution for basically everything in this world. I feel like we see this happening almost every day in tech. And if you were to just like think back a couple of months, maybe a couple of years, maybe you remember cryptocurrency and Bitcoin when it just kind of came out. Apparently, these cryptocurrency experts and blockchain experts thought that Bitcoin was the answer to everything from solving the problems in a democracy, to food insecurity, to famine, poverty, the gender wage gap, climate change, everything. <laughs> I mean, please. Extrinsically, I think just having one kind of passion, just one thing that you like to talk about or you get all of your information from, makes a person kind of boring and even a bit monolithic. I don't think this point needs too much elaboration, but I just think it can be pretty boring to talk to somebody who only has one interest or can only really talk to one particular thing. Or worse, keeps bringing back any kind of conversation back to that one thing that they can contribute to. Like, no Chad, we're discussing systemic inequality. I don't think the solution here is to sign everybody up to a digital wallet so that then they can participate in cryptocurrency trading and uplift themselves. Stop it. Stop. And this person with a singular interest, which is a person who has many different ideas but many different topics, we can combine them in different kinds of ways and discuss almost anything under the sun or has some cool ideas to talk about, that's interesting. That makes for a good, cool, awesome, memorable conversation. Okay, so if in the last two points I've reasonably convinced you that one, passion is not something you have to go and find out there, that it's a way of actually doing things. And number two, that having a singular passion can actually work against you, or it's actually more interesting to have many different kinds of interests. 
then we can now go on to point number three, which is really about techniques and questions that I ask myself when I'm thinking about something I wanna do and wondering, hey, can I do this passionately? I hope that these questions will be useful to you as well, that you can try and ask them yourself for the things you're about to do. Okay, and just to be clear, these are questions and things that I ask myself and I have found them useful when thinking about some activity I'm about to do. These have not been studied or validated by any kind of psychological study, at least not that I know of or have read. But again, these are questions that I have found useful to ask myself, so hopefully you'll find it useful as well to ask yourself when you're about to go on to doing some new kind of activity or a task and you're wondering, hey, am I gonna be doing this with passion and with interest or not? Number one, is this activity something I can see myself doing or opting to do versus passively consuming content on a streaming service or on social media? This is a surprisingly high barrier to entry if you're being really honest with yourself. Okay, I mean, if you're not as engaged in consuming content on social media and streaming services like I am, you can replace that bit with, is it something you can see yourself opting to do versus whatever else you do that you really enjoy but might not be the most creative or cool venture. Number two, is this some activity that actively aligns with my morals and also helps me build a skill I wanna learn for the future? I found for myself that if I do something that really aligns with my morals or that really helps me build something for the future, I get really excited to do it. Just as an example, with cooking, in the beginning it was really hard for me to cook, but then I knew that this was something I would really enjoy once I got a good hang of it, once I could make really delicious things. And so I kept on with it and now I just love cooking because I can keep making some really cool dishes and things that often excite me or surprise me. Number three is, is this something that will expand the universe of things that I'm able to do now or in the future? Having some kind of sense of the kinds of doors that will open when you do this kind of activity that you're doing, I find that very motivating to continue doing that activity passionately and like trying to get all the learnings that I can out of that activity so then I can apply them to the future range of things that the current activity has enabled. And one more thing I wanna mention in this sort of third section of this video, and it's not really a question to ask or even a technique. Sometimes we can actually trick ourselves into thinking that whatever we're doing, we can never do passionately, but really it's just because it's more difficult than it appears in the very beginning. It's not that we can't do something passionately, but it's just the fact that we didn't anticipate the amount of time investment it would take in the very beginnings, and that, and that we really kind of thought we would be immediately good at it, and now we're confronted with that frustration of not being good at something immediately, and now you're thinking, hey, maybe you're just not passionate about it because you're not having the most fun time right from the start. So related to this idea, I came across this graph recently that has the amount of effort you put on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis. And what it basically shows you is that as you put like more and more effort over time, the results might not come immediately. There actually is a kind of a lag that exists between the amount of effort you put and time and the results. So in the beginning, for all the effort you put in, you're putting more and more effort, but the results aren't really visible, they aren't really showing up. But then eventually, the results kind of catch up to the amount of effort you've been putting in so far, and it can even surpass the amount of effort you put in the future. I like this graph, particularly when I'm faced with a difficult task that, or a task that requires more investment of my time than I thought in the beginning. It helps me remember that sometimes results will not come instantaneously, but will come later on, and I just have some kind of faith or trust in the process. It lets me really question my feelings of not being able to do something passionately and makes me wonder, hey, am I really not able to do this passionately or am I just frustrated that I have to put more time and effort into it than I'd initially anticipated? It makes me want to then give a good and honest effort at something rather than give up prematurely. And I think what that looks like as a more concrete rule is to at least give myself a couple of weeks or even like one or two months of pursuing an activity before raising my hands and saying, this is not what I wanna do. Because there is a good chance that after a couple of weeks or a couple of months, once I do get a good hang of things and I learn the ropes, that I will actually enjoy this activity. I just haven't given myself a fair chance, a fair shot at it yet. All right, so that's basically the whole video. Thanks so much for watching if you watched it this far. I'm really curious about your thoughts around passion and if you have any, leave them down in the comments below and we can discuss them. If you like this video, then I would consider subscribing to my channel so you know when the next videos are gonna come out. I post one video every week, usually on Sunday or Monday. Also, if you like the video, then hit the like button because that's pretty encouraging to me as I keep posting and creating new videos. All right, so that's pretty much it. So again, thanks for watching this video. Hope you like the other videos on my channel and I'll see you all next week.